butter crusted red emperor. It's a fabulous way of preparing fish. And it was made famous by one of my favorite chefs, that would be Neil Perry. Now I don't know his exact recipe, but I am going to try to replicate it for you today. In a bowl, we need lots of butter. And your butter needs to be soft. I would recommend bringing this out of the fridge at least two hours or until you can almost put your finger all the way through the butter like that. It will make a difference because you want to incorporate all of the ingredients. So if it's not soft, it's not going to distribute evenly. So into a bowl. And this is where you can become quite creative with the flavourings that you're adding to it. I love the addition of some toasted coriander seeds that I've crushed. Coriander seed goes really well with fish. And don't compare it to coriander, the actual leaf of coriander. It has a very different flavour to it. So if you can get your hands on coriander seeds, use them in this dish. Some French shallot. So one French shallot that I'm just going to finely slice and then get it as fine as you can. Uh, you could also use some spring onions for this recipe. And I'll finely chop the other half. For some piquancy, Dijon mustard. So about a teaspoon, two teaspoons. And the zest of half a lemon. Great. Now a good seasoning, so some salt and some freshly cracked pepper. And herbs, dill, tarragon, all those soft classic flavours with fish and obviously parsley works a treat too. So a sprig of parsley and we'll finely chop it. All right. Let's mix this together with some breadcrumbs. Now I'm using panko breadcrumbs. These are a great pantry staple. Because they are so dry and so crispy, they work really well for this crust. So just fold it in, incorporate it. It'll seem like there's far too much breadcrumbs for the butter, but as you press down on it, you'll see it come together. Now we can't put this straight on the fish, so I'm going to grab some glad bake, two pieces, and two. And we're going to use this glad bake as a vehicle to spread out our butter. So pop the butter on one side of it, press it down. The other piece can go on top. And then with your hands, or I mean, you could use a rolling pin if you like, just carefully spread it out turning the glad bake and then spreading out again and just forming a sheet of butter crust. So ideally you want this to be spread out so you can fit the two pieces of fish that you're going to be using. Also not too thin because we want a good chunk of that crust. So measuring it, spreading and I'll grab my fish and you'll see that there's plenty of room to add the crust to the top. Perfect. All right, that goes into the fridge. Give it about half an hour and then we can start crusting. All right, this is firmed up nicely. We can take it off the tray and we can place it on the fish. Now I'm gonna be using some red emperor. I found two beautiful pieces of red emperor this morning. I've removed the skin and we're going to place the butter where the skin has come off. So that ready side is where we're going to place the fish crust. So on it goes and just with a knife, you just wanna cut around that firm butter. Okay, and tidy it up. Okay, that's the first bit. Now before we continue, we need to season and flavour our fish. So just on this side, we'll add some salt and just a hint of pepper. And just carefully lift that off our glad bake. And you'll see that's the crust that's going to melt over that piece of fish. So we'll do the second one, pop it on top and trim around the sides. And you can make this butter ahead of time and roll it out so it looks like this. Pop it in the freezer 
and then this is a dish that you can make in no time at all. So next time you're at your fishmonger and you're getting some really nice fresh fish, this is a fantastic way to present it. Now I like to serve this with a little white wine and tomato sauce. And I'm going to do everything in the same pan. I love this pan because it goes on a gas cooktop, induction, and it also cooks in the oven. So it's very versatile and it has a heavy base. It's always good to invest in good quality pans like this. So you can use it to the best of its ability. So in with our white wine, about a quarter of a cup of white wine will go on the base and we'll pop our fish fillets into the pan. We're gonna place that flesh side down. So the fish is essentially going to steam in the white wine and then it's going to form a crust on the top. We'll also add some tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes and we'll just cut them in half so all of the beautiful juices are released. So you want about a handful. Season the tomatoes. So some salt and we'll scatter them around the fish. Now I've preheated my oven. In order for the fish to cook and that crust to caramelise at the same time, it is all about the timing. So 220, a hot oven for about 10 minutes. My fish is quite thin, so if you've got a thicker fish, it may take a little longer. Have a look at this fish. Look at that crust. It's just set perfectly on the fish and it hasn't broken up at all. I just love this dish so much. Now to finish off our sauce, we're gonna take the fish fillets very carefully out of the pan. And you may have noticed I've placed a tea towel on the handle. That oven was hot and that means that handle is piping hot. I can't tell you how many times I have burnt myself because I forget to put the tea towel there. So put the tea towel there and you are safe. So we'll let the fish rest for a moment while we just allow this sauce to bubble away slightly and finish it off on the stove top. So heat on high. I like to add just a crack of pepper and I can smell the wine. I can definitely smell the butter. You can see some of the shallots have fallen off the top and have also helped to form a lovely tomato and white wine sauce. I'm gonna add a very small squeeze of lemon. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna cut a cheek off this lemon for presentation onto the plate. We'll squeeze that lemon juice into our pan just give it a bit of a swirl, a bit of a jiggle. And that's all we need. Okay, to plate up. I'm going to add two kipfler potatoes. With a dish like this, keeping it simple. You don't need mashed potato, you don't need anything fancy. Just a very good quality waxy potato, like a kipfler potato is fantastic. The spoon, we'll spoon our sauce onto the plate first. Mmm, yum. And our perfect red emperor. We'll just rest it on the top there. For a pop of colour, a few sprigs of parsley. Just on the side there. Look at that. Butter crusted red emperor. That really is everyday gourmet.